Alright, so today we're going to go um, into the metabolism for the MCAT. And this is going to be a crash course on exactly what you need to know and nothing more for the MCAT. We've gone previous lectures uh, very, very in-depth in glycolysis, TCA, and PDC, but that's not really necessary uh, for the MCAT's purpose. You really just need to know these very, very basics. Okay, so glycolysis, what do we need to know about that? Uh, it's glucose, goes into 2-pyruvate, two 2-NADH, two and 2 ATP. Okay, that's all you need to know um, and you need to know that it's in the cytoplasm. This all occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell um, and it's oxygen independent. So regardless of whether or not there's oxygen or not, glycolysis will have to occur. Okay? Um, so do you need to know all the enzymes that are involved? No, that's not, that's not going to be important um, in terms of the MCAT. Okay? So what do I mean by um, independency? Okay? So glycolysis is going to occur regardless of whether or not it has oxygen or not. But we're going to come to this fork in the road where it's going to be oxygen if it's present or um, oxygen is not present. So no oxygen or oxygen. Okay. From there we're going to go into the PDC cycle if we have oxygen, into um, the TCA and into the ETC. Okay. Okay. So if we don't have oxygen, there's going to be um, two types of fermentation. There's going to be alcoholic fermentation and there's going to be lactic acid fermentation. Okay. So, alcoholic fermentation happens in yeast, uh, lactic acid fermentation happens in, in a lot of things. We, we do lactic acid fermentation uh, in our muscles when we, don't, when we exercise, we, we produce um, lactate or lactic acid. Um, and so that's all we really know. We can go over very, very briefly uh, what the point of fermentation is. So fermentation is when we have no oxygen, okay? no oxygen, and we'll look at lactic acid fermentation because they're both pretty much the same. So we have this end product of pyruvate. What do we do with it, okay? Um, and during glycolysis, we produce all this NADH. So NADH is pretty much, I mean, it, it helped us fuel um, glycolysis because there's an electron. Um, NAD was an electron um, acceptor and formed this NADH. But we need to reform that, that NAD um, because that will help to go into glycolysis, okay? So the main thing for fermentation is that we need to reform NAD. That's the only point of fermentation is to reform this NAD and that will go into lactic acid or it'll go into that um, alcohol depending if you're yeast. Okay? So that's all that you need to know for fermentation. Okay? We go um, and reproduce this um, NAD. So now for the PDC, what do we need to know about that? Okay? So we start with 2-pyruvate and this was um, after glycolysis. PDC only occurs when there's oxygen, okay? So it goes into this PDC complex, has a bunch of different enzymes, a bunch of different categories within there, um, and it's gonna put out acetyl-CoA, two of them, and it's also gonna form um, two NADH, and also two CO2, okay? So it's gonna lose these two CO2 uh, from the pyruvate, three carbon molecule, acetyl-CoA is two carbon molecule, um, and that's it. All that you need to know is this occurs in the mitochondria and it's oxygen dependent. Okay? Um, it will not occur unless it has oxygen. So now on to the TCA. What do you need to know about the TCA cycle? Okay? So the basic equation is the 2-acetyl-CoA. These are going to go and form 6-NADH. Um, They're going to form 2-FADH2. Uh, 2 ATP. In reality, these are GTP, but GTP and ATP pretty much the same. Um, and it's also going to release uh, 4 CO2. Okay? Um, so, what do you need to know? You need to know these have two turns. There's two turns to the TCA cycle, not just one. And we see that the TCA cycle looks something like that. The starting products were acetyl CoA, right there and oxaloacetate. So you need oxaloacetate to react with acetyl-CoA or you're not going to go through the TCA cycle. Okay? Um, so these are going to go throughout and you have two turns so if they had just one acetyl-CoA how much would it produce? Well it would produce half this amount. 3 NADH, 1 FADH2, 1 ATP, 2 CO2. Okay? So besides the two turns what's important? It occurs in the mitochondria. Okay? It occurs in the mitochondria um, and it produces these three molecules, NADH, FADH2, and ATP. So very, very important for that. Um, and it's also oxygen dependent. 
Do we need to know all the enzymes? No. You, if you do see them, they're going to be um, in the passages. You're going to actually see them on there. Okay. And the final one is the ETC. Okay. What do we need to know about the ETC? Well, the ETC. Okay. So say this is the the matrix of the mitochondria. This is the inner membrane. This is the outer membrane. Okay. The ETC is right there. It's on the inner membrane. Okay. So um, let's just draw it like this. So say this is the ETC. We're gonna have all our NADH and our FADH2. They are gonna release their hydrogens and their electrons. So all the hydrogens are gonna go into this area right here, which is called the intermembrane space. Inter membrane space and this is the inner membrane right here and this is the outer okay so inner inter and outer all the hydrogens are going to go into this intermembrane space give a proton gradient uh, make it very very positive um, and then they're all going to go into something over here called ATP synthase if you can guess ATP synthase um, is going to convert ADP to ATP Okay, so we're going to form ATP um, and it's going to be caused by all these hydrogens and all these electrons that were released from this NADH and these FADH2. And finally, um, the hydrogen is going to power this ATP synthase. But also we have all these electrons that are flowing. Okay, these electrons are going to be accepted by oxygen. So what's important for the ETC? Oxygen is the electron acceptor. Okay? Oxygen will accept electrons and form hydrogen or water, sorry. Um, but for people, for humans, oxygen is the electron acceptor. For other things, that's not necessarily the case. You don't necessarily need oxygen um, in order to fuel the ETC for bacteria, for archaea, stuff like that. So they, they can ask you in a couple of different ways, you know, do you always need oxygen for electron acceptor to power the ETC? Well, if they say strictly for humans, then yeah, but for other things, no. Um, so really that's all the, that's, that's that important, but also one NADH will go on to make 2.5 ATP, one FADH2 will go on to produce 1.5 um, ATP. So that's really that's all that's important. Um, you just need to know these main numbers for the uh, number of ATP that is produced. So just to recap, um, we have this glucose that will go into glycolysis, then it'll go into the PC, into the TCA, um, and finally into the electron transfer chain. Um, and so we know that our ultimate goal is ATP. That's really what the ultimate goal of converting glucose um, down and going all the way down these products into the electron transfer chain is that we want to produce ATP. And if they compare um, anaerobic versus aerobic, what do we need to know in this case? Well, we know that we produce two ATP in anaerobic. All that happened was glycolysis. We only produced two ATP there. But in aerobic, we if we go all the way you know, through all the steps, if we calculate it, we get 32 ATP. So this is a number that we should just memorize. 2 ATP in anaerobic, um, 32 in aerobic. So if they were to ask us something like, um, would, would the activity of the enzymes in glycolysis, and they could name an enzyme in glycolysis, um, but it'll be in the passage, that enzyme, um, would that activity be much higher in anaerobic or aerobic uh, to get the same number of ATP, to get the same number of energy? And that answer would be in anaerobic condition you would have a much higher activity of these enzymes because it has to work 16 times as harder to get the same amount of ATP. Okay? So we know that the enzymes in the anaerobic condition are working a lot harder. Okay? So that's one take home message. But pretty much overall the stuff that we talked about just now that's really all you will need to know for the MCAT in terms of metabolism. Hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.